Hello, and welcome back to the video lecture series for Introduction to the Art of Programming Using Scala. In this video, we are continuing to talk about arrays and lists, uh, the collections in, in Scala, and in particular, we're looking at uh, different types of sequences. And we want to talk about a concept that's related to this, the concept of variable length argument lists. So <clears throat> to help you understand what this means, let's pull up the RAPL, and let's remember what uh, the first way that we talked about how we could create an array or a list. So we talked about the fact that we could build an array or a list with a, an expression like this. And it's worth taking a second to say, well, what exactly is this that we're looking at? Um, well, this actually looks a lot like a function call. And in fact, that's, that's basically what it is. It's a function called array and we're passing at the arguments one, two, and three. Now, what's a little bit different about this function calls and the ones that we've written before is that this function call can take however many arguments we want. So, you know, when we wrote something like this previously, we could call f of three, or we could call f of five, but I couldn't call f of three and five because that was an error, because the function f only takes one argument. And this kind of begs the question, well, how are they doing this? Because let's give a, another example of where it might be useful for us to have this. What about a function that takes the average of a bunch of numbers? So I would like to have to be able to write a function where I can say average of one, two, or one, two, three, or you know, one, two, three, ninety-nine, whatever. How could I write that? Because if I just write average, and then I do something like this, you, know, you can kind of see what the problem is. I have to put in however many arguments we're going to take. What if I don't know how many numbers there are that I want to average? What if I want the user? to be able to specify that. Well, one way that we could have done that based upon what we know now would be to have them pass in something like an array of double. And then uh, this could simply be equal to nums.sum divided by nums.length. And I could call this version of average uh, by passing it an array. Now, technically, this version of average only takes one argument, but the argument has is an array, and the array could have a different number of things inside of it. But I didn't have to do that up here. Okay, up here, I was just able to call this and pass it however many arguments I wanted. And so I want to show you how we could make our average do that. And the syntax for it is actually fairly simple. Okay. The syntax is that you can give an argument and you say the name of the type that you want followed by a star. And what that means is that you can pass in zero or more things of that type. Note that whatever you, uh, if you include this, it has to be the last argument in, in your list. I could have some things in front of this. Okay. But if I want to use this star, this variable length argument list, it has to be the last element. Um, in this case, it's also the only element that I want. And the question is, how do you use it? And it turns out you use it just as if it were an array. Okay, and so nums here, uh, I can call sum and I can call length just like before. And using this average, I can do things like this. Okay, so I can now call this with a variable number of arguments exactly the way that we called the functions for building lists and building arrays. This is something that you might not do all that much, but it's definitely handy at, at times. The interesting thing to note here is that sometimes you actually happen to have a list or an array. I'm going to go ahead and use a list. Uh, how about 
okay? Uh, by putting the point zero on the first one, it says, oh, well, the best type I could use here is a double, and it gives me back a list of doubles. I want the average of those grades. And of course, I can't call it this way now because my average uh, function that I wrote up here doesn't take a list of double, it takes a double star. Uh, in fact, the, the, this being a list would have caused us problems even when I had it as an array. I would have had to call to array, which winds up using a significant amount of extra memory and extra processing. So the thing is, how could I make this work? Because it turns out this is a really common use case. Okay, it's it's very common that that you have something stored in a list or an array, and if the function was written so it takes a variable number of arguments, it just kind of makes sense that there should be a way to call it. And it turns out that there is. Okay. So here we have our problem because it says, well, you were supposed to give me, if, if you, there's only one argument, it needs to be a double, but there was a list of double in here. And what we have to tell Scala is, I want you to take this grades, but treat it as a somewhat different type. And so as we've seen in all of our uses of Scala, the way that we specify types on things is with a colon. So after grades, I'm actually gonna put a colon and I want to say here, I want you to interpret grades as a something star. Okay. We've seen many times before that you can uh, read this underscore in Scala as something. You know, when we're writing our little function literals and we did a, a underscore plus underscore, it's something plus something. Um, we really don't care. So to keep the syntax simple so that I don't have to type in double or int or string or whatever other type it is, we just put in an underscore here. And what this does is it says to Scala, okay, call average and pass in the grades, but treat the grades, instead of as a list of doubles, treat it as a star argument. Okay, so act like this is a whole bunch of different things. And it turns out that that uh, usage works just fine uh, for if you have something in a list or an array and you want to pass it to something that takes a variable argument list. So you should try playing with this. Um, take some of the functions that you have written previously that used arrays or lists and see how they work with a variable length argument list. Uh, I've written average here. Write one that takes, um, takes an average dropping the minimum value or something along those lines. Uh, so that's it for this video and we'll see you again soon.